It's 8.34, BBC Radio 2. He's the lead guitarist in one of the biggest bands in the world. Actually, he's just a proper legend. Uh, they're going out on tour again next month. He's also got a remastered solo album on the way, and he's pretty handy when it comes to astrophysics. Uh, good morning, Brian May, or should I say Dr. Brian May? You can call me whatever you like. <laughs> nice to see you, Gary. How are you? Good to see you too. It's been a while. Yes. Yeah. A while, indeed, and all kinds of stuff has happened, right? Yeah. Oh, my God. But you're still going stronger than ever, which is just brilliant. I'm feeling good, yeah, and I have a new album. It feels like a totally new album, which is exciting. And this is the very first interview I've done for it, so this is a real sort of embarkation on my new journey now. So thank you for having me on here. It's pleasure. You can only get better after this, Brian. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it's getting better already. <laughs> so, the album is called Another World, but it's a new, yes. a new old album. You've, you've decided to remaster yeah. your back catalogue of solo albums. Why, why did you decide to do that? I just felt that uh, nothing was out there that I'd done. I feel kind of proud of my, my heritage, my... Uh, my output, you know, and really it hasn't been available. I only realized recently because I, I took to Instagram and in Instagram you can use bits of music on your stories. You know, and I discovered I couldn't use my own music because it just wasn't out there. So it it's wasn't on Spotify. It wasn't on streaming services or anything? Nothing, no. And I called up my record company and I discovered I didn't have a record company. <laughs> so we went, okay, <laughs> let's do this. And I listened to the albums and I thought, my God, this is me. I don't feel like I'm a, a sort of uncle looking back on, on a kid making these albums. I feel like it's me. And if I was going to make an album right now, it would probably be this one. I actually have it in my hands, yeah. the, the box set. And to me, it's a great thrill because I can hold it and touch it. But also, it's in the modern kind of streaming services and, and social scene. You know, to me, it's, it's me getting to a whole new generation. So I'm well excited. So what was it like looking back at this album? And, and and listening back to the songs that you wrote, because when was it? Uh, 1998 it came out? That's right, yeah. Well, I, I thought it was, it was going to feel like being a sort of um, beneficent uncle, thinking, you know, you know, I was just a boy when I made this stuff, but actually listening to it, it's completely me now, and if I was going to make an album, I think this would be the album I would make right now. So I, I remastered it, but I didn't change a, a single note. I didn't change any of the mixes. Really? So you didn't, re so didn't mm. re-record anything? You didn't think, oh, I'm not happy with that guitar line, I want to change that? No, no. I, I just thought, oh, my God, this is something that I am proud of, exactly as is. What I did do, though, was go through all the outtakes and bits and pieces that I was doing at the time, and I put another CD together, like a kind of companion CD of kind of outtakes and, and other bits of material that never made it to the album. But I'm actually more excited about that than the album itself, probably, because there's things that s some people have never heard, or probably most people have never heard on there. So that's going to be on the deluxe version of the album, is it? That's right. That's yeah. another CD, which I've so enterprisingly called it. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> now, Marvelous, isn't it? <laughs> now, the album features Taylor Hawkins uh, from the Foo uh -huh. Fighters, who very sadly died recently. Um, yeah. What was he like to work with, Taylor? Oh my god, well in this album he was just a boy, he'd only just joined the Foo Fighters and we'd become friends and he came over to my studio and just beat the hell out of everything and with a huge smile on his face. I hadn't realised but he's the most <laughs> vociferous and devoted Queen fan in the world. And I think he made us single-handedly cool to a new generation. You know? I mean, I didn't think I was going to be talking about this, you know, when I put this album out. I had no idea that Taylor wouldn't be with us anymore. I feel devastated. Roger and I both do. He was like family to us. On this track, on this album, you hear him on Cyborg just going nuts, and it's, it's wonderful. I'm so grateful that I had those moments with him. Who, who else is uh, playing on the albums? You've got some good names on there, haven't you? Well, the great Cozy Powell. That, that's who I started out with, because I'd just been out on tour with him um, as the Brian May Band, um, which I foolishly toured the world with. <laughs> I say foolishly, because I kind of thought I could sing and be a front man. And I did, but it kind of brought me back to this realisation that actually I love playing guitar. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I'm very happy that, that we're going out in a month or so. Uh, Queen and Adam Lambert, and I get to play guitar. 
<laughs> kind of without any uh, any dilution. I can just devote myself to the, the guitar being my voice. But at this point, yeah, I was trying to do everything. And I, I, in the studio, I could do it. I just beat myself up until I sang these. <laughs> Ooh, we got the Zoom gremlins again. Brian? Oh. Uh, it's, uh, I tell you what, I tell you what, stay there. Uh, we're going to play the new single from the album, which is called On My Way Up, and we'll sort out the sound and we'll be back with you after this. Uh, from Brian May, taken from his new album, Another World. Uh, Brian is with us this morning. Yeah, so it, Thank you, Gary. That's the first play. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. It's really good. I it's like good. it. I love it, yeah. It's very uncharacteristic Brian May. Brian May's usually a miserable old beggar. <laughs> I've never seen you as a, I've never seen you as a miserable old beggar. <laughs> now, alongside the you don't live with me. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> uh, alongside the album is uh, a book of fan art, which we've been talking about on the breakfast show this morning. Bry art, yeah. it's called. It, it, you know, the lengths that fans go to uh, to to please the people that they're incredibly fond of. Uh, and there are some incredible pictures of you done by your fans. I mean, I can't believe how good they are. It's beautiful. I was actually gobsmacked when I found it. I, I got my first copy here. This is the deluxe version. There's only going to be, I think, 15 of these, and it has. I, it has I got a mine here. Cover. Yeah, you, you have the. Yeah, you have the, the ones that's going out to most people. Oh, a demo of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's so beautiful. I can't, my dear friend uh, Sarah Rugg put it all together. She's one of the artists, but she's uh, gathered together. I think it's 130 different artists, and the pictures are all themed on the album and what's on the album and me and stuff. And uh, I'm amazed. It's a whole new phenomenon for me. And yeah. I felt a bit kind of guilty at encouraging it in the beginning. I was thinking, is this narcissistic, encouraging people to, to make pictures of me, essentially? But actually, they're contributing so much to the visions that I have and the work that I'm doing. I feel like this is a, a, a step into a new place. And it's also helping all these artists. They're all young artists, and, and I wanted to, to kind of do something for them, to give something back to them. Who were you a fan of growing up? Oh my God! Well, that's very much the theme of this album. I was, I was a fan of, well, uh, Buddy Holly in the beginning. I think Buddy Holly's the the reason that it happened for me here in Maybe Baby, which is actually on this album. So I did a few tributes to my heroes on this album. Uh, Jimi Hendrix, of course. Uh, the Shadows. There's a tribute to them on here. Uh, the Hoople that we toured with, fantastic band. Um, we toured the the UK and then the States with them, and I think we learned how to be a rock and roll band from what the hoople bless them uh, so you hear a bit of that on this album too lots of my kind of influences and the reason the reasons that i became what i became and uh, what i try to be uh, your chat with gary barlow on his podcast we write the songs is coming out next week on bbc sounds where you're going to be talking about the songs that shape your career is there a, a mm. track off another world that you could say was really important for your career my career on my I think the title track is very important to me because it became the theme of the album. This idea that there's an alternative universe where things could be slightly different. I wrote it originally inspired by the film Sliding Doors, where one little thing changes, the whole of life, you know. And uh, my friend, a friend of mine, wrote it and, and directed it and asked me to write the song for him for the film, yeah. which I did. And I'm really pleased. And he's like, oh my God, this is the greatest song. About three weeks later, he phoned me and said, uh, Brian, I'm really sorry, we can't use it in the film because I've got different contracts, I've got different publishing deals, and we can't use it. So I was gutted. Uh. But I thought, no, this is this is meant to happen for a reason, and this will be the theme of my album. This is how I feel, because you know you write sometimes because somebody asks you to write something, or or for a film or a TV series, which happens on this album. But actually, you're writing about what's inside you. I think everybody does. I think that, you know, if you're an author or a poet or or a painter, you cannot help but put out there what's what's driving you inside and, and what's bothering you inside. You know, your joy and your pain get into your work. So that's the way this album is. And from that moment on, I knew that I had an album which was mine. <laughs> I've, got, I've got to ask you this. It's the other Queen's uh, Platinum Jubilee coming up in May. Hmm. Are we going to see you on the roof of Buckingham Palace again? I don't think I'm allowed to tell you at this point. <laughs> <laughs> oh! I think so. I think something might happen. I oh! think that there, there is talk of something happening. Um, 
<laughs> what can I tell you? you tell I can't hide now. I can hide behind here. Okay. <laughs> Plead the fifth. We may be there, Gary. We may actually be there and something may happen. Of course, it's hard to follow standing on the roof of Buckingham Palace, but um, you never know. It might be possible. Well, I'm, re I'm looking forward to that. You got me intrigued as well. <laughs> and you're also off on the Rhapsody tour, uh, Queen with Adam Lambert, in just over a month. You must yeah. be so excited to get out uh, in front of fans again. Yeah, I'm kind of speechless, really. It's it's been so long, and you wonder if you can actually still do it. My solution for myself has been I train and train and train. I, I ran into a lot of trouble during lockdown physically and whatever and I had a long way to come back up so every day now I get up and I do my interval training and I do my fitness and strength exercises my stretches and it's become like a sort of new religion to me it, it makes me feel better physically but also mentally as well so I have to be ready mentally physically spiritually for getting back out on the road and give people what they're expecting to see and a little more I hope Fantastic. Well, listen, I've got to say, you look brilliant on Zoom. Uh, the Thank reissue you. of Brian May's Another World is out next Friday alongside Another World, the Briart Collection, and it's also available to pre-order from today. Uh, I'm going to play... Uh, I've got to play a Queen song, um, ah. and I've decided to play Hammer to Fall because you uh. have a version of this on the deluxe album. I'm going to play the original, but tell us about the version that's on the deluxe album. Yeah, the version of the Deluxe Album is a live version that I did and I kind of converted it into a ballad because the, the words had a lot of meaning for me and they still do. I wrote it about really my vision when I was a kid of how the world was and you hear the last words, it's not a very optimistic vision. I'm talking about growing up in the shadow of the mushroom cloud but that's the way we were, my generation, because the nuclear missiles had just been deployed, if you like. Well, not deployed, but ready to be deployed, pointing at each other. Um, and of course now we're kind of plunged back into the dark ages, so it seems very relevant to me. Um, but the, you're going to play the original? Yeah, it, it's very kind of angry and up, and I like it that way, but it's possible to hear it as a, as a kind of introspective ballad as well. So you, you can hear that on the other CD on this release, yeah. And of course, it just shows you at your very, very best. Brian? Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Good luck with the album. Bless you, Gary. Good luck with the tour. Thank you. And happy Easter. And happy Easter to you. Come see us. I will. I will.